good evening. I wrap Steen of Linen Associates with your spider ETF wrap up. And this is for April 1st, 2020. It is Wednesday. So if you look behind me, you see a pretty big sea of red with the exception of gold, the gold miners, and TLT. So what is going on? There was in the marketplace, if you will, the move to the safe haven. The other market that got bid was the yen. But literally all the stock indices were down. Most of the major ETFs were also on the downside. When we take a look at XLK, you can see that the market had a bounce. And this was uh, from the latter part of March right up to the last day of the month and then is let go on the very first day of April. Does this mean we're going to get more bad news? It's very possible. We have to keep our eye on just how these things are going to play out. You know we're playing the COVID. You're not playing market fundamentals. You're playing the emotion as to what's going on. When we take a look now at XLK, you can see how the market on the swing line also did. You made the higher high, and if I come back to yesterday's action, if you take out this low of 78 and a quarter, you do damage to the chart immediately, and that's exactly what occurred. So the market has stepped out of, if you will, this correction phase back into the correction, mode back to the 18-day average of closes and just under it. If you rally a little, I wouldn't be surprised to see the resistance at this uh, 78.28 level. When you take a look at where you're at in Bollinger Bands, they're now narrowing in on the market. And what has happened is you went from this big vertical price decline to a bounce, and suddenly, if you'll take a look at this, you don't have the market going one directional anymore, so the bands are wrapping themselves around the market as the sideways action is taken over. In terms of momentum, it's on the verge of turning down. So you have the bias down because you're under the 18-day average. You don't have a trend in the swing line, and momentum is on the verge of trying to turn back down. When we come to SMH, which is the uh, Semiconductor 25 index, lower highs, lower lows, straight out bearish, resistance at 113.08, momentum on the verge of turning down. I think the bears took back control today. I think they'll defend it against this 18-day average. And if the market should get over yesterday's high, that would be the number that gets them scared, and that number would be 121.34. Barring that, are we in for a test of these lows again becomes the big question. In XLI, which is the industrial sector spider, trend down, lower highs, and with today's action, you confirmed and broke through that low. So now, I think the bears defend the 18-day average area. I don't think they want the market to get back over that 60 and a quarter zone, and barring that, this market still looks bearish to me. You're neutral in the XLE, which is the energy sector spider, because you've had this contra trend move up in the swing line. However, you've never been able to get up and stay over that 18-day average of closes. It kept the bias down, and now the momentum that had been gradually moving higher, and you can see it, how it was doing there, is stalled right now. You can reinvigorate the bull move here by getting back over the 30 level and not getting under 2709. That would give you and keep the higher highs, higher lows over the 18-day average. But wherever this Bollinger Band comes in, I look for strong resistance in that market. In QQQ, you went neutral today. And what I say by that is, if you'll notice, you've got the higher lows, higher highs coming into today. If you take out 184.66, the market gives up the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. It's also overbought coming in, and you can see that's what it did. It didn't turn into a bear route at this point. It just left that swing back up that we had. If you take a look at the, uh, let's go to this one. I did the QQQ. Yeah, the emerging markets is what I wanted. Now, lower highs, lower lows bearish. Market under 18-day average of closes. That part is bearish as well. In GLD, the market is corrected back down to the 18-day average of closes. I define that 18-day average as the line in the sand. When you're over it, market has an upside bias under it, a downside. But the fact that the swing line's down and you have an upside side bias, you have a market that just pulled back from that high, sort of hanging at that average, and momentum's not telling us a story. 
in the gold miners. How often do I have to remind you that we're just fighting at that land, uh, at that line in the sand? You've got an upside bias because you have higher lows, higher highs, and you have the bias because you closed over it. But it's the first time we've closed over this number. I think you got to stay there if you're going to get anything out of this. And again, if you were to rally hard, look for this Bollinger Band to drop no matter what happens, I think, tomorrow. And it wouldn't surprise me if resistance shows up at 2733. The question is, can it get there? In TLT, I've said for several days now, I am disappointed with the fact that on this whole rally, and I know the news media is playing this up, but you haven't been able to get back to these highs. And it's not going to be easy because you've got that Bollinger Band in front of you in an overbought condition. When I come to FXE, which is the Euro currency ETF, I remain in the bear camp. Lower highs, but what do we have? We have a lower low. If this market rallies, I look for resistance between the 18 and the 100 day average of closes. I think the bears will be aggressive in defending that, but they won't want to see the market over 105.21. You put it together, you come up with a game plan, this will fill in behind me. Now what I did today is I created a new stock report. And what I mean by that is I went in and what I filled in for you was very simple. I, I decided to do a Fibonacci report on the stock market. It's going to include the Dow, it's got this uh, SPY, well actually it's got the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, and then the VIX cash. And what I'm really showing is from this current high to the low, what the market did and is the market gave us that bounce where it ended. Most of the markets, forget the VIX because that, that's a flip of the other markets, but we have the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ all made a 38% retracement in the market, which is the first Fibonacci retracement the way that I teach it and the market stalled right there. Be very careful. This is a market that went to a zone where it's hanging. Now, can it get to the 50% or is it gonna go back and challenge the lows? Very important area. To see this, go to our website under the word research reports. It's right there. I'm I. Repstein. You have a great day and I will see you all tomorrow.